Hi, my name is Jian Yan. I'm part of the Windows Server security team. Today, I will introduce another security feature in Windows Server 2016, which is called Device Guard. This feature uses virtualization-based security to isolate the code integrity service from the Windows kernel. It can block any unwanted software running, even if the attacker managed to take control of the operating system. In a nutshell, you can choose exactly what's allowed to run in your environment. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can leverage code integrity policy to protect your environment. This is a Windows Server 2016 VM. I want to create the code integrity policy such that only trusted publisher signed software can run on the server. This is a commandlet, which scans through both user mode as well as kernel mode files, and finding all the signers, then add them into the code integrity policy. So you would want to actually run this uh, creation policy process on a clean server, where you know all the software that you trust running on, on it. So this actually runs for about 20 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. and use this, the one that I just created. To use this XML file as a code integrity policy, you want to convert that into a binary file, then copy into the code integrity, fold, uh, code integrity folder on the server. So first getting into a binary file, and then copy into the correct location. Make sure you name it correctly as the sipolicy.p7b file. and now reboot the machine. The code integrity policy will be um, in, in action. All right, now machine comes back, and now CI policy is running in audit mode. So this audit mode is like an exercise of what if, if you have CI policies configured. And now every time you run a file, it will get evaluated see if this file is actually covered by the CI policy. If not, it's going to lock an event. Uh, let's see, I have a installed a uh, remote desktop connection manager. Uh, just to check it, see this file actually doesn't have a signature, which is not basically violating the uh, CI policy on this machine. So let's see what happens when I try to run it. So it started. However, if you look at the event log, as you can see, these files are getting not logged, saying they don't meet the CI policy. So if you go through each event log periodically and you can tell if the CI policy is adequate to cover all the files on your machine or not, and I'd like to show you a cool way of um, looking at a number of machines, which is using the uh, OMS, Operational Management Suite. So this is the OMS portal page. Come to the settings. I've already created this template, which will retrieve the code integrity event logs from all the, all the management, uh, the servers that be managed, and add it to the dashboard. And from this simple view here, you will see all the files that violating the CI policies from the servers that have been managed here. Even better with the table view, you can get a very, very uh, good summary on all the files. And after going through all the, uh, each of the files, you can decide on whether you want to run, allow them to run or block them. Once you want to lock down the server, simply go to that server and then we can change the code integrity policy from audit mode to the enforcement mode. 
Okay, now let's come to the server to run this command to change the policy from the audit mode to enforcement mode. Again, don't forget to convert this into the binary file and place it into the right place. Again, after reboot this machine, the, uh, the code integrity policy will be in force mode mode. Now the machine has started. Let's see what happens if we want to try to run a file that's not covered by the CI policy. Now it cannot be executed. In the previous demo, I showed you how to define CI policy with the trusted publisher. In this demo, I want to show you how you can even go further to lock down a server by defining the list of files to run on, on it. For example, on a Hyper-V host, you don't want to run any additional software on the host itself. So now you can create a CI policy using the file publisher option. This commandlet will run for about 20 minutes after it's done. You will have a policy like this. Again, converting this policy into the enforcement mode and restart. Now the server is running enforcement mode with file list. So let's see what happens when we try to run something that's not covered by the CI policy. You can see it's getting blocked. So in the last few minutes, I've shown you how powerful Device Guard can be to protect your value asset on Windows Server 2016. For more information, you can find from the link on the screen here. Thank you.